Well, everyone, the iPhone 10 by far is probably one of the more interesting phones that Apple's ever made, and it is probably one of the best phones Apple's ever made, in my opinion. So let's go and see how this particular beautiful phone holds up in 2024, some of the pros, the cons of this particular device, and see if it's still worth buying in 2024. Now, if you want to buy some phones, I would recommend buying this year. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the iPhone 10, still to this day, this is still a beautiful looking iPhone that Apple did a tremendous job with back in 2017 when this phone first came out and it still is holding up so well in so many different areas in my opinion as well. Now, with the iPhone 10, this particular phone on the front has a 5.8 inch Super Retina, you know, OLED display. And at that time in 2017, this was a groundbreaking display, you know, for the most part from Apple. This was the first time we had an OLED display. This was the first time we had like a massive removal of bezels. And it was a lot of, it was a good time for a lot of firsts from Apple as well, because 2017 brought a lot of decent phones. And this was a very good phone, probably the best phone of 2017. Now you were getting the notch up top with Face ID. This was the first iPhone to bring both of those things, which is pretty insane. And Apple just went through and removed the notch this year. So think about how many years we had the notch from 2017 until 2023. Apple basically kept the notch and then they removed it now basically with the iPhone 15s. So it's quite insane that that actually ended up happening. And that kind of stuff is actually pretty insane when it comes down to me. So that in and of itself is a massive, massive thing to keep in mind right there as well. Now with something like the iPhone 10 on the bottom, you're still getting that very good feeling textures and you know, it's a very good feeling phone, which is something I loved. You're getting that reflective material on the side as well, which is very good. And on the back side, you were getting that standard glass back. Now, this glass pack still feels very good. It doesn't feel cheap by any means, and I still think it's a very good feeling phone for the most part. You're getting that dual camera setup on the top left, which is great, wide and telephoto lens. You're getting wireless charging, you're getting IP certification. And for the most part, for a 2017 phone, when I compare this device, even against the iPhone 15s, I'm actually still shocked by how good of a job Apple did with the build quality of this phone. And when I pick up this phone, it still feels like a very expensive device. Maybe it doesn't feel like a thousand dollar phone anymore because it doesn't have a frosted glass back and, you know, maybe like the triple camera setups and everything, but it's still a very good feeling phone. And I'm still surprised by how good of a job Apple did with this phone back then. And it still feels so good in this day and age. So on the exterior and on the body, that kind of covers it up there. Now from the camera side of things, this was also a very decent point from Apple because, you know, they gave us a better camera than they had on the iPhone 7 Plus, but it was pretty much the same camera as the iPhone 8 Plus. So you were really just spending more money on that build quality. So with the iPhone 10's camera and, you know, what it brought at that time, it was a dual camera setup, 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel telephoto lens with a 7 megapixel front facing camera. Now you could do 4K at 60 on the back and you can do 1080p filming resolution on the front. And I will say at that moment, at that time, this camera was very good. It was a good camera. I don't think people would buy this phone because of the camera, because if you would, you would just buy the iPhone 8 Plus and maybe save some money. And I didn't really think it was like that monumental of an upgrade coming from the 7 Plus. I think the 7 Plus brought a lot of capability and it was a big upgrade coming from the 6S Plus camera. So for them to have like two years of like back to back big camera updates, I didn't really see it happening either. So with this type of phone with the iPhone 10, it was a good camera. You know, it was a good camera with a lot of capability and, you know, you had portrait mode in it, video modes, you know, no cinematic mode or anything, but it was a good camera and that was something that I liked. However, when you look at phones nowadays, you are definitely missing out on, you know, triple camera setups with an, you know, ultra wide sensor. You're missing out on like 8K filming, even 4K at the 60 on the front you're missing out on. So you're missing out on a lot of stuff with this camera for sure. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but once again, it's just one of those small things to keep in mind. It's a quality of life thing. If you're buying a phone nowadays, you probably want it to be as, you know, the you probably want it to be like the best camera that you can get for the price tag. And I really think you could probably do a little bit better with this camera from that price tag standpoint. So keep that in mind. Nothing super insane, nothing super crazy, but it's just one of those small things to keep in mind there. So from that perspective, that kind of covers it up from the camera side. From the software side of things, this phone is still a very interesting phone to say the least. So it started off with iOS 11. I personally thought this phone was going to get iOS 17 this year, but guess what? It did not end up getting iOS 17. And that was a very sad thing. I feel like this phone ended 
of itself could have supported it. I don't work for Apple, so there's nothing I could really do. My opinion means nothing to them. But still, it would have been really nice if we had some of these older phones like the iPhone 10 that could still get iOS 17, even on phones like the iPhone 10 R, iPhone 10 S. When those types of devices got this type of, you know, software as well, I feel like this phone could have gotten it. And this is probably the saddest thing going on for this phone because this phone is pretty much outdated with software. It's still getting some security updates, so it's still getting like iOS 16 security updates and those types of things, but it's not really getting any more software updates on top of that, which is kind of a big problem. I would hate to recommend a phone to people that's already going to be outdated with software, and that's kind of the issue that we're running into here. So I say that to say, if you're buying an iPhone 10 in 2024, I would recommend just double thinking, just probably avoid buying this iPhone because of its software updates. If you're okay with rocking an iPhone that's, you know, not getting any more software updates, at least in terms of the latest ones, then, you know, go for it. But otherwise, I would just recommend avoiding this iPhone because there, you can always buy the iPhone XS that's still supported with software. So that kind of covers it up from that specific perspective. Now, from the performance side of things, this was a very interesting phone as well. So this thing had that Apple A11 Bionic chip inside of it with three gigabytes of RAM. And I will say, although the chipset and the RAM of this thing isn't really like the most insane thing of all time in this day and age, this phone still feels fairly smooth and fairly fluid whenever I'm actually doing anything with it. I think fluidity is the word that I would use to describe the performance of this particular iPhone in 2024. And the reason for that, it's not because this phone's performance is amazing or that it was like a massive upgrade coming from the previous gen or, you know, it's similar to the iPhone 15. Not really. It is because of the gestures. The gestures in and of itself make the biggest difference for these older iPhones. Meaning, when I compare my iPhone 8 Plus and my iPhone 10, literally my iPhone 8 Plus feels significantly slower and, you know, more, I don't know how to describe it, just, I guess, aged more. Like, it seems like it's, like, aged horribly compared to the iPhone 10. And that is because of those gestures. The fact that you can literally use the same type of gesture-based design that the iPhone 15s have, it just makes it feel so much faster and feel so much more fluid rather than something like the iPhone 8 Plus. And in a way, I'm actually happy that Apple made the 8 Plus and the iPhone 10 to kind of showcase to us like, hey, just the fact of just tinkering these designs and just tinkering the gestures literally makes it feel like a brand new phone and makes that phone age a lot better than something like the iPhone 8 Plus. Rather than clicking the button over and over again, the iPhone 10 with is just all it's just all one screen. It makes it look so much better. And it feels so much better too. So personally for me, I feel like the iPhone 10's performance, when you're playing games and everything like that, is not amazing. But Apple did a really decent job with this thing for the gestures, and I'm really happy about that because it's made this phone age a lot better from everything that I've tested with it, you know, so far. So take that as you will, but that's like another thing that's kind of a big advantage for this type of device as well. The battery life is one of those things that's really not like that crazy great anymore either, but still like it's not terrible. And that's just like another one of those things to keep in mind too. So to kind of sum it up, what I'll definitely tell you is I think the iPhone 10 is definitely one of those phones that I look at as probably being, you know, definitely not the best phone of all time, but it's definitely not, you know, one of the worst it's definitely not the best phone of all time, I think, though there's been more impactful phones than this, but it is one of the most impactful iPhones of all time, and I think Apple did a tremendous job with this phone when it first came out. My only gripe with this thing happened last year when Apple didn't give this thing, or, you know, to iOS 17 when it happened in 2023. I feel like Apple should have done that. I don't know why they didn't. I know why they didn't, basically for probably for money reasons, but I feel like Apple should have supported this thing. And because of that, it, it's not really a phone I'd recommend people to buy. Like if you need a phone short term, then go for it. Otherwise, I'd probably recommend avoiding this iPhone in my opinion. So that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.